Hanukkah Sameach. Many people refer to this day as Zot Hanukkah, the last day of Hanukkah, because the laning includes the words Zot Hanukkah to Mizbech. This is the inauguration of the Mizbech as we round out the section from Parshat Naso of how each day the princes brought various korbanot as gifts at the time of the Hanukkah, the dedication of the Mishkan. I'd like to consider some of the lessons that maybe we can take from this day, Zot Hanukkah, as we go into Parshat Miketz, particularly in this dark winter, that perhaps we can find little light that we can carry with us. When the Gemara describes the holiday of Hanukkah, it uses a strange formulation. It describes Bechafhe Bekislev Timnaya Yomin de Hanukkah Inun, which literally translates as on the 25th day of Kislev, there are eight days of Hanukkah. This is a strange way to say that an eight day holiday starts on the 25th day of Kislev, which was last week, of course. The Shulchan Aruch uses the exact language, Bechafei Kislev, Shmori Mei Chanukah. Uh, the 25th of Kislev is the eight days of Chanukah. And the Rama has to add the word Matchilin, that the eight days start on this day. There's a general question to be asked about this. And the reason why this question matters is for the following idea. There is a mitzvah in the Torah that each and every day in the Beit HaMikdash, they had to light the menorah. Imagine, here the Maccabim come in, and they, uh, the Chashmonaim, and they refurbish the Beit HaMikdash, and they light the lights, and they get up the next day, and they're still lit, and it's a big miracle, but then they say, well, we have a mitzvah. The mitzvah is to light the lights, and if the lights are already lit from yesterday, that's yesterday's mitzvah. So what did they have to do? They had to extinguish the candles, but the halacha teaches that once you extinguish the lights, the oil and the wicks cannot be reused. You have to switch them. So now they have to spill out the rest of the oil and put new oil in. So maybe the, the miracle, the nace, was that they had a, a cruise of oil that each day when they woke up was refilled again. It's possible. But what about the nace Hanukkah that you and I remember from our childhood? I thought, as many actually do say, it was lit the first day. And the miracle was that it stayed lit for eight whole days. Okay, but what about the mitzvah? So you could say, well, they just didn't do the mitzvah for the extra seven days. They didn't do the mitzvah three years plus. They were locked out of the Beit HaMikdash. Here they are Kohanim, Kedoshim, who work in the Beit HaMikdash. They come back and they say, yeah, okay, it's still lit. We don't have to do the mitzvah. Is that possible? So how do we understand this question? Which again, on the face of it may sound somewhat technical, but in this question and in its answer is perhaps a lesson that we can take with us now into the future. It has to do with how we understand time and how we experience time. To be sure, time is a creation. Breshit bara elokim et hashamayim aretz in the beginning. It's the first word of the Torah. The Sforno writes in the beginning of time, time itself a creation. But how do we experience time? How do we feel when time passes? Rabbi Moshe Wolfson in his volume on Hanukkah treats this question in a most interesting way. He says that in the name of the Rokeach, one of the Rishonim, um, the Rebbe Lazar of Worms, quoted in the Bnei Sasra and other sources, Hanukkah, the eight days of Hanukkah, has the concealed light of the days of Mashiach within it. This is not a mystical concept, really. The Maharal writes this and others. Seven days is a natural cycle. The number eight is associated with something beyond nature. Eight days Hanukkah, eight days Sukkot, eight days for the Brit. Everything in the sevens is natural cycle. Shesvirat HaOmer, Shemitah, Yovel, agriculture, etc. The week, weekdays, but eight represents something beyond nature. And the idea here, perhaps, that in the lights of the Hanukkah candles, we're meant to catch a glimpse of the end of days. What glimpse is that? Of a different way of experiencing time. Perhaps, theorizes Rabbi Moshe Wolfson, the way around this problem of how did they ignore a mitzvah for seven days is to understand that while outside of the Beit HaMikdash, outside of the context of appreciating the great nace of, of the Pach Shaman and the nace, which is Chanukah, 24 hour days times eight elapsed. But inside the Beit HaMikdash, those eight days were experienced kiyuma arichta, like one long day. And if the sun never set and it was never nighttime, then the long extended day of Hanukkah, of eight days worth, elapsed like one long day. Bechaf hei timnaya yomin de Hanukkah inun. 
on the 25th day of Kislev, within that day, did eight days elapse. Chanu, kof, hey. Some have a minig when they light the Hanukkah candles, a Hasidish minig. I do not have this minig, but some have this minig to say the 91st chapter of Tehillim. The 91st chapter, Yoshe Beseter Elyon, which sometimes we say sadly at a funeral. It's called the Shir Shel Pegoyim sometimes. But some people say it at the time of Hadlaka Neirot. We said the beginning of Yizker. Many people know this chapter. It's obviously in Pesukah de Zimra, 91st chapter of Tehillim. It ends with the words where Hashem says to an ag aggrieved person who is suffering, who is at a time of tsara, a time of, of trial and suffering, Orech yamim as a length of days will I satiate him, and I will show him this when I save him. Why are there eight days of Hanukkah, asks the Beit Yosef. There should only be seven days of Hanukkah that we celebrate because they found a cruise of oil and they lit the, the oils, the first day, it's not miraculous. It's only days two through seven, through two through eight that were miraculous. The Beit Yosef asked this question, and there are, are books with hundreds of different kinds of answers. Says Rabbi Moshe Wolfson, here's the answer. The answer is because baked into that first day was all eight days. The dimensions of the eight days could be found already on the first day itself, inside the Beit Hamikdash inside the world of understanding this as a great nace, they could see something that was happening within history, but that which was actually beyond the natural order. Orech yamim as bishuati, and we repeat it. Orech yamim as bishuati, I will satiate him with the length of days, and I will show him this at the time of salvation. The Megala Amukot Rav Natan Nata Shapira, who is buried in the Ramah Cemetery, our shul was there in our heritage mission. Um, uh, it feels like eons ago, it was just uh, la summer before last, says that that's what it means at the beginning of Parshat Miketz. It says, Vayihi Miketz Shnatayim Yamim. So it was at the limit, at the end of two years. Instead of calling it years, it calls it days, Shnatayim Yamim. By the by, since last week, until uh, this week, two years elapsed for Yosef HaTzadik in prison. For us, we experienced it, so to speak, within just uh, uh, seven days' time. Vayhimi Kates writes the Megala Amukot, when the time comes at the end of days, it will actually be that many years will pass and will feel like one day has passed. It's not a question of quantity, but a question of how one experiences the days that are left. You see, the Gemara at one place in Masachet, Avot Zara, and elsewhere makes the claim that the world will only subsist for 6,000 years. Well, by that logic, we're in 5781. How will we actually get recom a recompense for all the years that we've suffered? As Moshe Rabbeinu himself begs HaKadosh Baruch Hu, ki imot initanu. Bring us joy, he says in the 90th chapter of Tehillim, according to the number of days that we have suffered. There aren't enough days left to get back all the days that we have suffered as a people throughout history says the Megala Amukot, just as the Navi Yeshaya declares that someday, somehow, when Mashiach arrives, the place of the Beit HaMikdash will be expanded as the dimension of space will be expanded. So too will there be an elongation of time. One day will pass, but it will be so long it will feel like an entire year. Zot Chanukah. This is Hanukkah. All the lights are kindled now. All the homes are aglow. All who know the deeper meaning of Hanukkah can glimpse within its flickering candles the future by those eight lights, a time beyond time. The truth is the eight lights were already shining on day one, and yet we had to build up to it incrementally, each day adding a candle to be able to see all of them manifest to say Zot Chanukah. And now on the day of Zot Chanukah, the Ne'ilah of these eight days, we're meant to lock in, to imprint the image and the vision of what Chanukah means. And Yehi Ratzon, God willing, we will soon be through the period uh, that we're experiencing now. As the Medrash Tanchuma writes, Medrash Rabbah writes this as well, Kates Sam Lachoshach, quoting the verse from the book of Eov, God has given a limit to the darkness. He investigates for all destinies. And we're on that road as well, dear friends. And as we're continuing now into the dark, dark period uh, of um, the winter and of COVID, 
we need to take strength and to recognize that we have an ability to take the Zot Chanukah, a vision of the future, and to see our moment in perspective, and to recognize that as we feel now that this has been an extended period of time, Yeshua Hashem Keheref Ayin, the salvation of Hashem can come like the blink of an eye, and then we'll be Zochim to see the great Chanukah Tamizbeach and the kindling of the menorah in Yerushalayim Yerakodesh, Bimher Bimeinu, Amen Bimein.